Okay. Hansla, as question up. My name is Coyote. My Shamashi name is Ernie Michelle. It's a great honor to be here today. I'm here to talk a little bit about regalia. The first regalia we ever made was when Red Hawk was two years old. We made him a grass outfit. And so that probably being about uh, 90, 93 was our first outfit made was for him. But here we have um, part of a traditional outfit. This here is um, a side drop. This goes on the side here. And this is the vest. And this is uh, Charlie, our son Charlie's second outfit. This here is applique. The outfit that he has today is all beadwork. The vest is fully beaded. The side drops are fully beaded. The gauntlets are fully beaded. So everything that we do today is we do our best to um, do the beadwork. This is uh, his first outfit. His grandmother made this, and this was his first outfit. Uh, had the buffalo on there. He still keeps it. This one here was my first attempt at uh, trying to do um, beadwork on a side drop, and it didn't work out because there's no backing, and it's all lumpy, and I didn't like it, so I put it away. This here is part of a bustle that Charlie and um, Red Hawk and Justice have all used this at one time or other. It's a traditional dance. Red Hawk also does um, grass dance and chicken dance. This one here is uh, was, uh, gifted to them also. It's another part of a traditional outfit. This here is part of a dance staff. It's part um, something that a traditional dancer would use. But we also use it as a family staff. We've been doing this for many years. Like I've been thinking on the way down, like there are four different types of uh, works that can be done for outfits. There's the applique, which this is, beadwork, embroidery, and quill. And quill is pretty difficult to find. You don't see too much of that out there, but when you do see it, it is beautiful work. But the majority of the work that's done out there today is probably applique. It's easier, it's lighter. A fully beaded um, Outfit would probably weigh up to close to between 50 to 70 pounds. So we do our best to do the beadwork for our children. Like I've done beadwork for Justice, Eliza, Red Hawk, Charlie, and Corbin. We are working on something for Izzy and work, looking to do something for um, Blue Jay and Shandin. So these are some of the works that we do as um, people, like our family is a powwow family. We sing, all our kids dance, our grandkids dance. So we do our best to make it so that um, they're proud of who they are. And when we see them out there dancing, it, it lifts our hearts. Because I'm getting to the point where I'm 100 pounds overweight and I can't dance anymore. My knees are pretty well gone. So I do my best to sing. So I have an opportunity to sing with my two boys, um, Charlie and Red Hawk. Sing with uh, Shadow Mountain and uh, Wild River. But this here is basically the men's. Mm. We can go over to the next table, which is some of the beadwork, and some more applique, and there's a little dress for uh, child so we'll go to the next table on to the next table here we have another applique this is done by Red Hawk's 
for spouse as far as uh, traditional it's an applique got the TP and, and uh, buffalo or one of the ungulate so whether it's a horse or a buffalo I'm not too sure the feathers this one here I believe was one of our granddaughters I'm not too sure but it's uh, Izzy or um, Sean Din. I believe this is uh, Izzy's first outfit when she first started dancing. These here are bells that I planned on using but because of my health and that and my knees going I'm choosing to just keep them for now. The, this here is uh, the moccasin uppers there for our grandson uh, Corbin. We've been working on it for a while, but with uh, COVID, we haven't um, been able to really do too much. This here, this belt, you can see was a mate to this other side drop. This is one of the first belts that I made, and I used a loom for this one. And I find that the loom, if you pull your wraps too tight, it bunches up the beadwork. Then I discovered this type of beadwork where it's nice and flat. I look on the back, I don't have no knots. I've seen some work at one time that the guy was asking, I think, $2,000 for it. He didn't have no back in it, it's just like this. But I picked it up and I looked in. I'd seen all his knots and I just said, no, I don't think it's worth $2,000. He did good work. He did good work, but he didn't have no backing. This here will have a leather backing after it's done. This is going to be part of my outfit. This is the gauntlets. This is the headband. This is the centerpiece. This here was something that I did for Kanaka. This is their logo for their um, hydro project. So I took that and I used that. Now this here is what we call a tie. I, I, I want to make one like this. This is gifted to us from a, a good friend, his family. He was a very good dear friend of ours. His name was John Trebasket. And he passed on into the spirit world. His family had a memorial giveaway. And we were invited and they had all his stuff out. And they said, take everything because we can't keep anything. And so this was part of that giveaway. Same with this. This is part of that giveaway and same as this. This here is a belt. This is another uh, loom work. Loom work is good, it's fast, but I still like to do this kind of work. This is, isn't loom work, this is um, flat stitch. And I like it because it's, uh, you don't have to worry about it um, bunching up or anything like that. It's just a little bit harder when it comes to doing designs. You gotta look at the width of the beads and whatnot. But all this is uh, it's learning. It's learning is um, like I said. We've been doing this for many years. Like I said, we do. We've done beadwork for all our children, our grandchildren, and my wife and I. This is part of Pauline's work here. Okay, okay. You know, this is uh, some of the work that she's done. But this is something like we've done other moccasins. And we've, uh, we're learning as we go. So this is, um, this table here is just some more of the work that we do as part of a powwow family, looking after our children and grandchildren when they go out and they dance. We take pride in what they're doing because it's something that we never got to experience, but our children and grandchildren are 
leading the way in regards to going out and, and dancing and singing. So this table is just some of the beadwork and some of the other part of the outfits that we work on. And then we'll go on to the next table. <laughs> Once again, it's a great honor to be here. This here is a shawl that um, we were gifted about 35, 40 years ago. Back then, this is how all the shawls were made. You didn't see no ribbon or anything like that. This is the type of fringe that uh, was the thing back in them days. The artwork was is beautiful. I don't know who did the out artwork, but it is something that um, was gifted to us. Today, you'll see a lot of the shawls made similar to this. A lot of applique work. And some people even use fabric paint today. This is one of the things where the women, they don't, um, don't see, really see any um, beadwork on their shawls because the shawls are meant to represent the butterfly. So this is our, my daughter, Salam Ditko, Tony Lynn's outfit that is made by her grandmother. It's a shawl and here's her skirt. This is made by her grandmother, Irene, who lives in Chilliwack. I don't know too much about uh, the women's regalias, but I just um, know that our daughter, when she danced, this is what she used. This next one here, this here, is a grass dance. This is our son, grandson. He's our grandson, but I call him son. It's uh, Justice. Shook, shook, grizzly. And this is a... Uh, Outfit that was made by his mother, who he calls, uh, this is his um, mother that's with his dad now, the Brianna, and I believe she made this. And um, so that's the yoke, it's part of the grass dance outfit, or that's a breech cloth. And this is uh, his upper, and it's like, it's like a, a coat or uh, zippered up and it works really good. Today they use uh, fringe. Back when I was grass dancing 40 years ago, all you seen was yarn. Today you see a lot of ribbon or you see fabric cut to make it lighter because back when I was dancing, I went to a powwow, I weighed myself before I left, and when I got back home Sunday, I weighed myself. I lost 15 pounds, and that was in the middle of the summer. So the yarn holds in a lot of heat, whereas this doesn't. So now today, a lot of the grass dancers go to this kind of material or ribbon. And this here is part of uh, Justice's outfit. Just have to fix it up and finish it off. But I'm thinking of changing it because he's getting taller, he's getting bigger. And I'm thinking it's time to, to go to the glass cut, similar to what I had in the back table there. And this, is, this was his leggings. His uh, mother got smart and, and new shorts. We, we kind of adapt to different ideas to when we make outfits. So it's been really an honor to be able to come and share a little bit about what, um, how we work with outfits, how we work with them, how we put them together, the different types. We do a lot of the beadwork and we do a lot of applique. But it's not just my wife and I. Now we have our chef and our daughter-in-law who's doing it. Our other daughter-in-law is learning how to bead. Our daughter is learning how to bead. I'm hoping that our grandkids would learn how to bead. That way, I'll tell them when we go powwow, make sure you have a little repair kit. You have your needles, your threads, your scissors, your glues, whatever it is, part of your outfit. I tell them, you make an outfit bag and you make a little repair kit because you never know because we've been to powwow where so things have ripped or came apart and we didn't have nothing to fix it. So this is part of 
outfit, the regalia, what little I know, what I was taught, and what I learned over the last 30, 40 years of doing this with our children. Our oldest was born in 86, 87, and 91. So we've done a lot of different um, outfits, had a lot of help. And it's great to, to be able to do this and what, share what little knowledge I have in regards to putting outfits together. Other people, there are other people out there that do different types of work. There's Sophie White, she does moccasins, jingle dresses, fancy. Same with our niece, Danielle, she does work. She's done work for her daughter and made outfits for other people. She even made Red Hawk's latest outfit. So she's learning how to expand her repertoire and building and putting together outfits. And it's really good to see that, that we can rely on each other. We help each other out. It's not just one family, it's the whole family helping each other out in regards to doing the work and putting regalias together. The grandmother lives in Chilliwack. It's easy for her to go to Fanny's Fabrics and just pick up whatever she needs. So that's how we help. Like it's just not just one family, but the extended family also that's learning to work together and putting regalias together. So it's uh, really been an honor to be able to come and share what little I know putting together outfits, cook's gamma relations. So hope 